Russian President Vladimir Putin is expected to announce today the annexation of four Ukrainian regions to Russia following so-called referendums condemned by Ukraine and the West as shams. The United Nations warned the move would mark a dangerous escalation and jeopardize prospects for peace, while Kiev warned it would elicit a harsh response. Good morning, I'm Abhuday Shresta and these are the headlines of the hour. Dissatisfactions intensify among political parties regarding tickets for upcoming elections. Nepali Congress and CPNUML leadership in process of making amendments. Technical team of IKO to arrive in Nepal to assess Nepal's aviation sector. Minister for Tourism and Civil Aviation Jivan Ram Shrestha says Nepal's aviation sector is safe. Russian President Vladimir Putin scheduled to hold a signing ceremony today to annex four more areas of Ukraine after self-styled referendums condemned by Ukraine and the West as a sham. And Portuguese football legend Luis Figo scores a goal at zero gravity in a Guinness record-setting football match played above 6,100 meters. A meeting of Nepali Congress has been held to win confidence of the disgruntled faction of the party, which has begun protests against the party leadership's monopoly in recommending the proportionate candidates. It has been understood that Nepali Congress is making preparations to amend the closed list submitted at the Election Commission by including members close to Shekhar Koirala. After internal rift escalated, discussions were held among Nepali Congress officials on Wednesday as well. Meanwhile, organizing a tea party yesterday, the disgruntled faction continued its protest program against what they say was party president Sherbadur Deoba's monopoly during preparation of the closed list. In a separate context, political forces that had surfaced with voices for Madesh-related issues are now divided into fragments. In addition to that, as the general elections is drawing closer, leaders and members of such parties have begun seeking their opportunities with larger political entities. Main opposition CPNUML has initiated discussions on candidates towards the direct category for the November 20 provincial and parliamentary elections. The party's Deputy General Secretary and Head of the Publicity Department, Prithvi Subbagurung, informed that in the meeting that was held till midnight last night at party chairperson K.P. Sharma Oli's residence in Balkot Bhaktapur, focused on the selection of its candidates. The party has embraced the strategy of not being flexible towards the leaders who had rejoined with a 10-point agreement following the breakup of the entity. According to a source, Chairperson Oli has pushed forward a condition demanding apology from those who did not give him the vote of confidence when he was the Prime Minister. Ten of those leaders who had rejoined the party have said that such division should not exist in the party. CPN UML members who had, who had joined from CPN Maoist Center have also appeared dissatisfied towards Oli's modest operandi. Meanwhile, CPN UML has also held talks about possible collaboration with Lok Tantrik Samazbadi Party and Rashtriya Prasadantra Party at a few places. It's time now for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. Here's the question. Why are political leaders increasingly changing parties? Your options are A, opportunist nature, B, lacking confidence on leadership, and C, disrespecting public vote. The voting is on type NEWS. Select your option A, B, or C and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Minister for Culture, Tourism, and Civil Aviation Jivan Ram Shrestha has said that the Nepali sky is safe for aviation. Addressing the 41st Assembly of the International Civil Aviation Organization, IKO, Minister Shrestha said that Nepal had adhered to the international standards and recommended practices for safe and secure aviation system. Minister Shrestha said that Nepal's adherence to the IKO standards is more than 70%, while the average adherence by the rest of the countries remains at 67%. He further added that the government is committed to ensure the safety, reliability and standards of the aviation sector in the country. Representatives of more than 170 countries had participated in the IKO assembly that is conducted every three years. Meanwhile, a technical team of the European Union Aviation Safety Agency is scheduled to arrive in Nepal next week for the audit of aviation safety. The Civil Aviation Authority of Nepal has said that the audit will begin this coming Thursday immediately after the conclusion of the Dasai Festival. 
The government stakeholders believe that Nepal will be removed from EU's flight safety blacklist with the European Union Safety Audit. EU had blacklisted Nepal eight years ago, barring aircrafts belonging to Nepali airline companies to fly over its sky. IKO had announced that Nepal had surpassed the average adherence to aviation safety protocols in the Asia-Pacific and the world. The audit will be based on IKO's report, while Nepal will select new destinations based on the report provided by the aviation agency. In our public voice segment, we had asked people in several provinces regarding the diet and lifestyle that will help prevent heart-related ailments. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Public voice. Spicy khane kura haru kam khane garnu parcha. Sarik byayam garna paryo, hinna paryo. Mislak pat haru khane. Hinne byana ma chai morning walk garne. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.